How are we doing guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another scrap car rescue and here it is, the Clio 172. Now I've had this sat on the driveway for a little while, picked it up a while ago, um, just haven't got around to do anything with it so here we are, we're finally going to get started, we're going to get it going and uh, yeah, not sure how far we're going to go with this but um, we'll see, we'll see. But perfect little candidate for a uh, scrap car rescue. Let's go and take a look at it. Right then, so I picked this little Clio up um, from the second owner. Now, uh, she had some running problems with it. They um, uh, had the spark plug change. It didn't solve anything. They've owned it for almost 20 years. So uh, they decided to part ways with it. And I thought it was the, uh, wow. Well, I, I couldn't let it go to scrap. I couldn't. <laughs> These are uh, becoming few and far between now, these little 172s, so uh, yeah, I had to do something with it. But as you can see, all the body works pretty rough. It needs a good clean. All the wheels, they're all uh, curbed and nasty. Um, but other than it needing a good clean and the wheels doing, obviously the, uh, the headlights are a bit naff. Um, there's lots of lots of greenage and uh, yeah apart from that it doesn't look in that bad condition i think with a good polish a good clean up um, get the alloys done i think it'll be a good little car cat v end of life there you go you can see when i picked up like 22nd of 7th 21. <laughs> i've just not had the time but yeah not a bad car. So this is what we've got to start with. Because it's a 172, it's a phase one, it hasn't got the centre exhaust all exposed. It's just got the hidden away exhaust down there. If we go and have a quick look inside, we have Renault Sport. We have Renault Sport. Um, the seats don't look too bad. They're starting to go a little bit a little bit mouldy in places where it's been sat for a while. Um, the steering wheel is nasty. It's really nasty. The back seats don't look too bad. It just needs a good clean, good valet, and clear it all out. Um, if we climb on in. Now it's got all the nice little trim bits on it and Alcantara. But yeah, it doesn't look bad. The points that need doing on the inside is gonna be this steering wheel, which is so sticky and horrible. It just, it's gonna need a whole complete recover. All the plastics, they're all, you can hear how sticky and hot. It's just, oh, it just leaves a horrible fit. It's all, all of this, all of this. And, all of these, the door, they're just going to all need a good scrub and a good clean to get all this sticky, nasty stuff off. But yeah. Um, oh, and the other thing is this. This roof lining is awful. So this is all going to have to be redone as well. But yeah, let's, uh, let's have a little look at it. She'll fire up. Oh, there we go. Look, you can... We've just got three cylinders there. That's all we, we seem to we seem to be missing a cylinder. But saying that, apart from missing one cylinder, she doesn't sound that bad. We've obviously got service light on, airbag light on, engine management light on. So <laughs> that's just a few other things we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, I don't know if uh, oh. Oh, we got oh, we got a code. Code. Anybody knows a Renault code? I need a code. Uh, do these work? Oh, yeah. We got some. We got some blowage. Blowage is good. Uh, there we go. There we go. We've got confirmation of the mileage. One hundred one two five. So it's just covered one hundred one thousand miles, which. Still got to be plenty of life left in this yet. <laughs> right then, I'm going to get this moved over towards the garage and we'll, um, we'll start investigating and find out why this engine's running on three cylinders. 
Right, so as you can see, it is proper mangy under here. It's just, there is dirt and ming everywhere. <laughs> it's really gonna need a good clean up. But I think first port of call is we get this cover off and uh, we see if there's anything electrical and uh, see what's firing and what isn't. All right. Okay, I've had a little mess around, and uh, first of all, I noticed that these cables are all brand new, the, uh, all the HD cables. Um, and I also noticed that it doesn't appear like the coil is very old either. So I thought it was gonna be easy fix. Didn't turn out to be quite an easy fix, or isn't going to, because <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it yet. Um, but I, un undone some of the cables and started it up and see if I could figure out which uh, cylinder wasn't firing properly. Um, but that wasn't an easy way of diagnosing. I noticed on this cylinder, I'm not quite sure what number it is, but it did make a bit of a difference when I unplugged it and plugged it back in again. Um, so I got my OBD2 reader out, plugged it in, see if there was any fault codes on there. And I got an injector fault on two and four. So, I think the next port of call is uh, I'm going to get this off, get the injector fuel rail out, get a new set of injectors, chuck them in and see what that happens. Um, but I've had to order them. They're not very expensive, about 30, 40 quid. So uh, when they come, we'll reconvene and see if that makes a difference. Right, I finally ordered some injectors and they've arrived. I haven't got new ones. Uh, it's just because they're quite expensive and I don't know if this is going to run properly, if it's going to pass an MOT. So I've just got these uh, reconditioned and tested ones. I'm um, going to whack them in there and uh, see if it makes any difference. So we fitted the injectors, it wasn't too bad, but as you can see, are you gonna be able to focus? There we go. So we definitely had a bad one. You can see that the ring on there is nothing like that one. And also the uh, plastic clip, the green plastic clip was missing off the same one that had the uh, the bad seal. There, there you go, look. Nasty. So I'm hoping that that's gonna make a difference. Whether it does or not, we'll see. Charles Trents are one of the UK's leading experts in vehicle recycling, offering cost-effective solutions to the public and the trade. 90 years of experience in collecting over 50,000 vehicles a year using specialist equipment enable them to recycle over 95% of each and every vehicle. Do you have a scrap car that you don't know what to do with, MOT failure, faulty or damaged vehicle? Then why not jump onto the Charles Trents website for a quick and easy instant quote. All you need is your postcode, your vehicle registration number, and it's as easy as that. Trents offer a fast and professional collection service along with the best prices paid for unwanted vehicles. Ha 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 ha! 
<laughs> well, that's not running on three cylinders anymore. Engine management light's gone off. You beauty! Well, that was a nice easy fix, wasn't it? At least we got the engine running sweet. Let it warm up for a little bit. It's not been running for a while. Don't know how annoying squeal is, but. So it was coming up with injector fault codes, and I've cleared them, restarted the engine again, and uh, this vehicle has no fault codes. So that's good news. We do still have airbag light, which hopefully is under the seat, um, just uh, a connection issue. And we do have the service light, so I'm hoping those two are related and uh, those two will go out. But apart from that, she's warming up nicely and uh, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Slam the door I messed up on the bedroom floor What the hell do we do this for? I push you up, you come back That attraction, we can't fight that Oh, keep telling myself that I should let go But I hold on Okay, a bit of a fiddle around with the seat underneath A bit of contact spray And we can see we've got no airbag light And the service light has gone off as well so there we go we've cured the engine fault and the airbag fault she's warmed up now she's sounding good all right i think all we need to do is uh put everything back together under the bonnet again put the covers back on um, to give it a good check round for MOT, see if the uh, the blades need doing, if uh, the lights, washers, tyres, all that thing. Just just give it a good kick around and make sure that there's nothing obvious, and we'll get it taken for an MOT. So there we go, that is the MOT prep done. I haven't done suspension, I haven't gone into the brakes, I haven't checked any of the bushes underneath. All I've gone through is all the obvious stuff. Wheels, tyres, lights, wipers, 
all the, the general sort of stuff, just to make sure that I can do everything I can on the driveway to get it for an MOT. So, yeah, I think that's where we're going to leave this episode here. I've just about managed to get enough footage, I think. It's taken me about four weeks. But, um, yeah, we're fighting with the light. It's a time of year. There's not a lot we can do about it. So, I can only do what I can do. Uh, so, yeah, next time you should see us, hopefully, we'll have an MOT. Or not. Or we're going to have a lot of work to do to get an MOT. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for plenty more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.